So the name MS-13, uh, what does it stand for? So MS is, so M is Mara and the S is Salvatrucha, and 13 is always the 13th letter of the alphabet for the letter M. Okay. Now, does that have something to do with army ants? Well, you, you see what I'm saying? Like there is a, the Marabunta right. is AKA a, an army ant, which is considered one of the deadliest uh, really animals <laughs> in, in, in nature. It's basically, it would, it would eat through anything. It would, it would attack anything and just run through anything, flesh, you know, uh, plants, whatever, in order to get to, to what they wanted. Is there some sort of connection to that? You know, if you continue to see the history of, of, of what MS stands for or MS is, they, I remember sitting down in couches like, like this right here, right here, and people will go ahead and talk and try to make um, images of something and try to portray it even more and, and, and more, um, you know, give it, give, giving it more spice to whatever it was. But there was some talk about the, the, those ants as, um, as well. But Mara in general is a slang word in El Salvador, like saying, where are you going to, where's the Mara at, like where is the group? So Mara was even a word that is a Salvadorian word that was even formed before MS started. So that's how they got the Mara. And Salvatrucha is slang for Salvadorian. Okay. So in order to join the gang, there's something called a beat in. Right. And it goes for 13 seconds. Correct. Where they basically... All the other gang members will beat on you, and then after 13 seconds, you're considered part of the gang. Correct. Okay. Now, you know, you talked about the, the hand signs. Mm -hmm. I guess called the devil's head. Well, again, it, it consisted of a, the hand sign was um, was copied from the heavy metal rock concerts that were um, right there in Salvador. So nobody knew what it really was. They just saw everybody going like this. And in some Metallica stuff, that was the time when the, the Metallica music was deemed satanic, right. devilish. Yeah, Motley Crue. Motley Crue. And Shout at the Devil. And right, all that like, stuff. Like, yeah, sa satanic imagery and heavy metal were kind of going together in the 80s. Right. I, so I remember when you, all that. Right, yeah. so when you go like this, it's also like that. And then it, it played in well with, within the gang because it did consist of during those times with the devil's horns. And then it consisted, if you turn the hand sign upside down, it's an M as well. Ah, gotcha. Now, along with the hand signs came the tattoos. Right. Now, in 2020, seeing a rapper with a bunch of face tattoos is considered normal. But back then, you never saw it. Right. And MS-13 guys were like the first ones that I really saw with very heavy heavy face tattoos. It evolved. Like, I remember being in the in juvenile facilities in the early, about 1991, 1992, when I was locked up in Central Juvenile Hall, Los Padrinos, Silmar went to camp. And there was a whole lot of, there was some people right there already that those face tattoos, there was some East LA gangs that already had it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people that were actually known for the face tattoos were the people from 18th Street as, um, as well. And again, that was just another step that MS-13 began um, mimicking, if you will, of other gangs to try to go ahead and fit in. Because again, the gang did not start in El Salvador. The gang started with the LA culture influence in the, in the United States. And if you remember back in, I mean, back in the days, you know, we're talking about the 60s or something, the first tattoo of a gang member was probably like a teardrop or a smile now, cry later, or brown pride. So they started copying the tattoos from there. But yes, absolutely, MS-13 did take it over the top, if you will, with the face. With the face yeah, I mean, I mean, you see, you know, MS covering an entire right. person's face. You right. see the horns right. on the head. You, right. you see the 13. Uh, you know, like people's entire faces tatted up. That's considered somewhat normal with MS-13, whereas it's not quite as common when you see with like the Mexican mafia or the, the Crips and Bloods and so forth. Well, there is, I, I will say, be, regardless with the, with the horns, but, there, but you, I mean, you make, you make a great point because I, I do see that, but going into the, the stuff that I was seeing, like let's say in Los Angeles, there is some people that you, you see you know, with the MS tattoos. But when you go into El Salvador, now we're talking about MS-13 in El Salvador, then yeah, absolutely. There is everybody, almost a whole lot of people right there have those MS tattoos in their face. Okay, so these kids, they, they come over to the U.S. Mm -hmm. They get in trouble. Then they get deported back right. to El Salvador. Now, before MS-13, there wasn't any significant gangs in El Salvador. 
correct. From what I understand. But then once MS-13 starts coming back, they were the rock stars. Right. They, they had all this cool American things about them, and everyone started to uh, to really kind of copy them. You know, not copy them, but, but want to be involved mm-hmm. in what it is that they're doing. Now, during this time, it's kind of an interesting time in El Salvador, because I guess there's something called the Chapel Tepec Peace Accords. Mm-hmm. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. Um, so basically after the, the revolution had, had been, you know, finished, the, the Salvadorian government was required to stop using the standing, the standing army as a police force and form a new national police service. But the, the ruling party, uh, Arena, it was kind of the descendant of the wartime military government. So it actually, there was a delay in creating the national police force. And by the time it was finally formed, it was kind of like a lack of a police in El Salvador. So as the MS-13 guys were kind of building up power, there was no real police presence right. uh, to really go against them. Is this kind of accurate in terms of what's happening? Yeah, well, absolutely. The thing also was that they were just trying to recover from a civil war, if you will. Exactly. Now, we're facing poverty. We're facing um, a whole lot of deaths, murders, trying to even reconnect families or somebody trying to even survive a day of what they're going to eat or where they're going to go ahead and live. And now with all these deportations happened, now MS has this, um, now MS started right there and it's an uprising and they don't know how to go ahead and deal or handle the clan culture. So absolutely, MS members did take advantage of that to continue to start that uprising over there in, in El Salvador because of the lack of resources over there, um, law enforcement wise as, um, as well. But then also they did start, the way that they figured on how to go ahead and combat, they did start making these government groups which was like, like the Sombra Negra and what we have right now is the military groups that they're called Grupos de Eliminación, meaning that they're just right there mainly to hunt MS 13 members. So if you're going, there was a time when people were getting deported and the United, and the Salvador said, we can't handle this, how are we gonna handle these issues? So if you were from MS and you were getting off that plane, the militants, the Sombra Negra, will go ahead and, and disappear you from, as soon as you got off that plane, and go ahead and kill you. And if you were with your family, they will go ahead and kill them as well. 